Hey, what's up? My name is Arthur Weiner and today I want to talk about some mistakes made by aspiring photographers on their first photo shoots. These mistakes aren't all that difficult to notice. Those are fairly simple things that can be easily avoided if you know what to look out for. And that's exactly what my tips can help you with. Trust me, once you eliminate these problems using my recommendations, you will see noticeable progress in your work. Number one, incorrect autofocus mode selection. It's extremely annoying to mess up the autofocus selection while shooting. And I'm not talking about situations when it's clearly visible and there is still time for adjustments. Instead, I'm referring to moments when you notice a wrong focus after you come home and start reviewing the shots. Yet, we should give some credit to modern technologies in cameras. Now, most cameras, even budget-friendly models, have great autofocus, which often works perfectly well. But it's still very important to understand how to set up your autofocus correctly. There is one-shot autofocus when the camera focuses on an object in the frame and the focus doesn't change. This option is optimal for still objects since the focus will not let you down. For moving objects, there is continuous autofocus. It selects the object and tracks its movement in the frame. It's also worth paying attention to the focus areas. It can be the entire frame. This option is suitable for shooting multiple objects, such as a family photo shoot. There is focusing on one point, which the photographer chooses manually. This mode is especially convenient for static scenes such as landscapes, still life photos, and portraits if the person is standing still. There is also focusing on the center of the frame and a certain part of the frame. It is best to carefully study the autofocus capabilities of your particular camera, then go on on a photo walk and test shooting with various autofocus area modes. This way you will understand how the autofocus area should be selected in different situations. Number two, incorrect use of a tripod. A tripod is a photographer's best friend. Many people know it and love using it. This is the right decision, but not everyone does it correctly from the start. Often you arrive at the location, put the camera on a tripod and start looking for the right angle. There is no need to hurry. First, make a couple of shots with your camera alone. Only when you are sure about the composition, proceed to tripod installation. Placing the camera stable after the shot is finalized is easier and gives better results. If you go the other way around, there is a chance that you will be too lazy to change the camera placement. As a result, you won't try all possible composing options and angles. Next up, static settings while shooting. Incorrect camera settings is a very common mistake among novice photographers. You came to the shooting location, set all the settings, white balance, exposure triangle, and started shooting. But during the shooting, the conditions can change a lot. Exposure and white balance may change, especially when shooting on cloudy days or in harsh light. Therefore, always check the exposure meter in the camera and check the white balance before taking a picture or a short burst. It's a little easier when you are in the studio and have total control of the lighting settings, like now, but still remember to constantly check the settings and check the exposure before shooting. This is a good habit and will help you avoid multiple problems such as broken frames and prolonged post-processing when you'll try fixing all mistakes. Truly, a lot can be fixed in a photo editor, especially if you choose the right one, which will be easy to work with and retain all modern features. For example, I use PhotoWorks to edit all my photos. However, I'm still confident that we should try doing everything correctly directly during the shooting itself. Photo editors should bring photos to perfection without spending time on fixing rookie mistakes. Better spend time on cool editing that will breathe life into photos. For example, I really like adding a film effect to my photos in PhotoWorks. It's extremely easy to do. As soon as I'm finished with white balance and exposure adjustments, I switch to effects, then effect catalog, and I click on the camera films in the drop-down menu. All that's left is to choose the desired effect. So if you're looking for high quality photo editing software that's functional and user-friendly, you should definitely try PhotoWorks. You can download the program using the link in the description. After downloading, you can use a free trial period to explore all the functionality. For those who are set in purchasing, there is another link that will give you a 60% discount. Number four, exposing for the shadows. When shooting very contrasting shots, many make the mistake of exposing for the shadows. This incorrect approach leads to the sky losing all details in your pictures. Unfortunately, those details 
details cannot be restored in any photo editor. It's much better to expose for highlights like the sky. Try finding the balance so it's not overexposed or too dark. Of course, this is not the only correct way. If you're shooting a model against a bright sky, for example, then you will have to sacrifice details in the sky because it's more important to show the model. Or in order to have the correct exposure of the subject but also preserve the details in the sky, you can additionally highlight the model. Use a flash, a portable constant light source or at least a reflector. Ignoring the composition. When you first start shooting, there are a lot of tasks to keep in mind. Tweaking all the settings correctly and maintaining them, working with the model and of course preserving the composition. At the same time, the composition is often not paid enough attention to, especially if the shooting is intense and there is not much time to look for the right angle. The right composition will help you enhance the effect of the photo. The wrong one can ruin everything. We have already published a video about composition, so check it out to figure out how to create a composition correctly and what compositional techniques there are. Still, while shooting, do not forget to spend some time finding the right angle and designing the composition of your frames. Don't just rush into shooting. Make sure everything is perfect beforehand. As your experience grows, it will become easier to find the best possible conditions. If you are eager to polish your compositing and general shooting skills, I strongly suggest you to try street photography. This style will teach you how to find beauty in everyday life, interesting angles, etc. Yet street photography isn't all that simple. Check out a dedicated video on our channel to learn more. Number six, no foreground elements. Photography is a two-dimensional representation of the world, but our vision is three-dimensional. We are used to seeing the world in depth. Therefore, the elements in the foreground will help you create this sense of depth in the photo, making the photos less flat. It can be anything, a tree or a rock in a landscape photo, a model's hand reaching towards the camera or holding something in the foreground. There are no limits to your imagination when it comes to creating depth in your photos. Try using different tricks in every photo, experiment, and eventually you'll find something that will be great for you. Too much editing. Last but not least, post-processing. At first, many photographers get too carried away with editing. This is a really a very interesting and highly addictive process, but remember that you should not overdo it. Too much editing turns beautiful shots into a dated, ugly mess. Try to make photos realistic. Don't get carried away with changing colors or colors contrast, don't make the model's skin plastic looking. The world favors authenticity and uniqueness. On the topic of uniqueness, look for your personal style both in shooting and editing. Take rules into account until you master them. After that, start breaking them down to understand what you like. The whole concept of fashion in photography is very relative. Your satisfaction with the process is a number one priority. Those who are fans of their craft are the ones who establish trends. Thank you for watching this episode and spending time with me. If you have personal tips for budding photographers, leave them down in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Go ahead and click on this video and this one and see you in the next one.